for Stephanie Kappel and I'm a cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today I wanted to focus on a topic that I'm getting a lot of questions about and seeing a lot in my clinic with my patients and that is under eye bags. So I've done other videos on under eye dark circles, under eye wrinkles, under eye discoloration and I wanted to focus on under eye bags because it's a different phenomenon that happens in that infraorbital area which requires different treatments. So first it's important to understand why do we have these bags under our eyes? What changes are happening under the eyes to make it look different than it did 10 or 20 years ago? So a couple different things that happen. Some people can anatomically look like they have little puffiness or under eye bags and that's totally normal. That just has to do with your infraorbital and facial anatomy and that's fine. But sometimes people before would have had a clear transition between the eyelid cheek junction and no bags under the eyes and now they're starting to notice them get worse and worse over time. Why is that happening? The reason why is because as we have birthdays and gain, gain wisdom and get older, it's happening to all of us and we can't stop it, but what happens is there's different changes that happen in the cutaneous and the subcutaneous tissue. The skin thins, all parts of the skin thins, the epidermis thins, the dermis thins, the subcutaneous fat pad thins out, and the, the muscle thins under the face, even the bone gets resorbed and the, the skull bone thickness as we look at different decades in life gets smaller and thinner. So what happens is there's changes and it's a dynamic area and as these tissues change over time, Time, at different rates in different areas of the skin we start to notice these things show through and that's why it happens and understanding the mechanism in which we age and how to target therapies to directly reverse it or to erase it or make it less apparent is really really important so before I move on I ask that you follow and subscribe and hit the bell because I drop knowledge every Sunday morning on a dermatologic topic usually more focused in aesthetics because that is my area of expertise but I can talk about all things dermatology anything that you guys want to talk about I've recently launched my own skin line MD air which is an amazing experience and has been such an incredible journey and um, can talk about products there too but mainly I want to speak about topics in aesthetics that you guys want to know about especially with you know my fellowship training and I did my dermatology residency at UCLA where we had a large dose in our curriculum of cosmetic dermatology and aesthetics and just keeping you guys in the know with the recent technologies and up, you know updated information in aesthetics in a world where marketing and fake science just floods the internet everywhere. I just want to be a source of truth and reason and explanation with a scientific explanation as to why these changes happen with age, how these new targeted developments can help enhance um, our aesthetics and how they work with just a little bit more honesty and truth out there where there seems to be a paucity of that in today's world. Under eye bags. So what are exactly are the under eye bags? It's fat pad herniation that is pro protruding through under that delicate thin skin. And when you look at under eye bags or puffiness, it could be lymphatic drainage that's not you know mobilizing your tissue fluids from moving throughout the face. And it also could be just from this fat pad herniation. And so I wanted to bring up this topic because I've actually seen people who've had surgery and have it not done the correct way and can actually make matters worse and then they come into my office and we have to do a little bit of filler or volume restoration to kind of correct the post-operative defect that was left after surgery. So I think I've shared this with a few patients but I kind of just wanted to do a PSA and hopefully this re information reaches somebody who may find it useful. But the old way that surgeons used to do an under eyelid uh, lower blepharoplasty would they would just remove that fat pad. They would just take it out because this fatty pad under the eye would make, you know, the patients look like they have bags under the eyes. They would just remove it. The new school way of doing it, which most surgeons do in today's world, but there's a few surgeons that I've had post-op patients come to see me afterwards who aren't doing it this way. So hopefully sharing this information will prevent that from happening. They, they go in through the under eye lid surface on the mucosal surface and they reposition the fat pad. They cut it from inside the eye and I don't do this perform this surgery myself, but my, a lot of my colleagues do. And so they remove this fat pad from the underlying surface and they reposition it. So they take the fat pad and they cut it and they move it down and that makes a that creates a smooth junction between the eyelid cheek junction while still retaining that fullness. They don't remove the fat, they just reposition it and that always has the best aesthetic outcome. But as a dermatologist who prefers minimally invasive procedures, 
say somebody doesn't want to have surgery, myself included. I never want to have to have surgery under my eyes and I never have and I never will. And that's why I'm always doing laser resurfacing. That's why I'm always doing thermage and that's why I'm taking extra care of the under eye area because I want to prevent surgery for as long as I possibly can. So minimally invasive procedures to help hide that under eye bag or hide that under eye fat herniation include global use of fillers or tightening devices. Now I always prefer tightening devices, Fraxel or Thermage to help stimulate collagen, stimulate elastin to tighten the skin on top to make it not look as apparent. Now sometimes it has to be a combination of different treatments that target different mechanisms of action. When we do fillers, tear trough fillers or cheekbone fillers to kind of blend in that smooth and smooth out that transition so it doesn't go hill valley hill, that can be used too, but it's always really important to take a very conservative approach and less is more and successive approximation to the goal is always better. So I usually typically start with doing half a syringe per side. I always use a cannula. It's much safer, it's more effective. And if your injector doesn't use a cannula in that area, you should not be afraid to question him or her why it takes extra fellowship training or additional post fellowship training to learn how to use a cannula and I remember when I was in my fellowship I actually flew to New York and took an extra course where I had a lot of hands-on you know thousands of cases where I was using a cannula and I got very very comfortable with it and I feel that in that delicate area where it's highly vascular where complications can happen if it's not done correctly it's really important to take this extra step and measure for safety so aesthetics is always a lot like just working out. So when you go to the gym, you have a choice between the cardio machines, the free weights, the machines, and if you do a little bit of everything, your body will get the best result. If you're only doing one thing, you'll look better, but when you target something from multiple angles, it always gives the best result. And that's how my approach to under eye rejuvenation is. Sometimes people have bags under their eyes and they don't want surgery or they want to postpone surgery. So we'll do a little filler here, we'll let that settle, we'll see what it looks like it may not be gone but it'll be 30 40 50 percent improved then we'll do a little tightening device on top of it see how that goes then we may do a deeper tightening device on top of that and it's just a, a you know a combination of all these different treatments that can make that under eye area look amazing in all stages of life without having surgery and if you need to have surgery at least now you know to ask your surgeon to reposition the fat and not just remove it so I hope you guys found this video useful. Share it with anyone who may also find it useful and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell because I will consistently drop dermatologic and aesthetic knowledge every Sunday. Thank you guys so much, I love you.